author of a day today. Uh, and the workshop's closed, so there's not heaps we can do. So we're basically prepping for painting the ceiling, not the front, but the whole rear. Uh, we we're really happy with how the white turned out on the sides that we did. So it is the same color code as up top, but there's just so many random like bits and bobs, particularly where these speakers were. That was sort of the biggest catalyst to do it. But then we thought, well, it'll end up looking terrible if we just did the corners. So for how smoothly this went, it'd be worth doing this as well. We've already cleaned everything, uh, wiped it all down. I'm then, we're then now going to get the sandpaper on it and just scuff it all up. I mean, again, same as the walls, it's gonna go on pretty well regardless, but we just wanna make sure that it's all scuffed up and ready to bond better. We can't paint today, unfortunately, because the paint is at the post office and the post office is closed. So we'll have to pick that up tomorrow and get stuck into it tomorrow. But today we're just gonna be prepping stuff, sanding stuff, cleaning stuff, and then any other tidbits we can to then paint tomorrow. running around yesterday but we're back sun is out it's gonna be a scorcher today so we're actually in for some stupidly hot weather i i don't understand we literally went from freezing cold to now mid 30 degrees and disgustingly hot so i, really, I just wanted a shoulder season you know that'd be nice uh but we're back with nige gonna have to pull everything out of him again and then start prepping for paint i still haven't gone to the post office to get the paint because it's before they open so we're just gonna mask up everything we need to. I'll duck off, grab the paints, and then first half of the day today will probably be just slogging away with the painting and catch my breath between coats. <laughs> we we'll realize we're not gonna be able to paint today. Well, it's gonna be way too hot and we've got that tree stopping the sun from just baking the side of Nigel and then this metal just heats up straight away so I've got primer that I'm gonna do those two silver corners I'm just gonna do that now and then we're gonna to have to wait till like tonight because it's gonna be so hot that metal's gonna be way too hot and the temperature is gonna be way too hot which is such a bummer like ah oh, man there's nothing we can do. And it's gonna be over 30 degrees for like the next five days. So we can't just wait for it to go down because then we can't do anything else. So the ceiling has to be painted. So at least if I prime those corners this morning, then tonight, hopefully we'll be able to do a good stint. It's just, oh, so many things out of our control, it just annoy me. <laughs> but it's plenty of stuff to do. So we'll just prime it and then figure out what else to do today. So we're gonna see how much of a difference that makes just reflecting the heat. It is gonna be a very hot day though. So it's probably gonna be too hot, but if I can get it primed now before like the whole ambient temperature is scorchingly hot, at least that will give it a really good time to cure. And then it means come tonight, I'll be able to just get sort of, it, it's quite a quick, process once you get started with it. It's just more of this prepping and then the priming is important. And then we just sort of want to let that go. And then we'll just, it'll be too hot regardless, but at least that way, once it comes time to be able to jump in here again tonight, it's not going to be a massive, massive task. It's just going to be methodically going in cycles and cycles. Um, I realized last time as well, we're doing the same, uh, the same paint as the setup before. So we used, I can't speak from other experience, like this one's better than that one or whatever, but um, we use BCS can, so it's like an automotive one online. And then you enter in your paint coat. Generally, it's you should have your paint coat either a little badge somewhere, if it's an older car, I don't know about new cars. 
if not you can go somewhere to get a paint matched or whatever but for me i know this is alpine white um it's what we did the side ones with and then we're going to do the top with it to match as well so i knew the paint code which means all i need to do is just go order a proper this is just a color base so then i end up doing full color base three to four coats of that uh, and then I also then got, get the, uh, I don't have it with me right now, but I'll show you over top, the um, two pack clear coat to put over the top of that. And that has a hardener in it and a pressure thing that you end up releasing so that it releases the hardener in it. Uh, and that way it's just a way higher quality sealer to be a nice clear coat and a nice smooth finish. As I say, I, I haven't tried an abundance of brands um, and originally we weren't even going to do the ceiling, but for how smooth the sides went with the paint with the same brand, just doing that method, uh, we couldn't say no to doing the ceiling. It's just going to make it look so clean. There's heaps of scuff marks and bits and pieces and obviously the corners. So, um, if there's other stuff out there, definitely put them in the comments for anyone that's interested to know. But personally, so far, I'll let you know after the ceiling, I might ruin it. But so far, I can't speak higher of these guys. Uh, they also do primer as well, um, plus touch-up kits and everything like that. So I don't, I'm, I'm sure there are other ones, but I just don't personally know of other sites that you can literally put in your paint code, get it done, and then get it sent out to you. Um, I know there are in the UK and probably the States, but these are the ones I've found in Australia. Still pretty reasonable pricing for high quality paint. So. Food for thought, if you are gonna do something like that, at least you can get a, a quite a good finish being someone, just your average Joe. I would recommend though, just watching heaps of videos in terms of, um, there's a couple different tech, I guess, techniques um, for applying. So like doing sort of like your longer, even strokes for even, co even coverage, but then when it goes to the clear coat, you sort of are going longer ones for even coverage for the first one, two coats. And then you'll sort of go smaller bursts in smaller sections to lay it on a little bit thicker and a bond, but not in one go, sort of divide it up into little quadrants or whatever, lay it on a little bit thicker and then a final sort of feather coat over the top of all that to do one final coat that should really put a nice thick seal without any ideally orange peel is um, the little ripple sort of effects and just lay it nice and smooth. Um, and when done right, you shouldn't really need to sand a whole lot, to be honest. And as with everything, it's always about prep. So enough of me gas bagging. I think I'm gonna try and get another little coat of primer on any other spots that I see that need primer now that it's all taped up, thanks to Kendall. And then we're probably just gonna have to duck inside and do a bunch of other random stuff while it's so hot, because it's already an absolute scorcher. It's like the sun behind me. All right, primer's done. It's so hot in there. Um, basically, I only got one can because the main reason for primer, there's no point in just like priming over paint that's good for the sake of it. So the main point of the primer was all the parts that we'd sort of like ground off paint when we did the removal of the speaker gunk stuff. Uh, and then also just sort of evening out over that silver just so that it doesn't mean I have to go as heavy with the real high quality um, color paint that we've bought so that way it'll be far easier more seamless it will not look patchy at all the whites are very I mean, whites white you will notice it as a whole but there's not going to be like thin spots that'll stand out so the main thing is just nice even coverage of the bought white but now we're just going to let that go leave that for a while see how hot it does get this afternoon but I think it's going to be too hot to paint until this evening this evening so uh, I mainly just focused on those corner bits and then there were various like scratches that had come up um, and I noticed there was one spot on the side wall that I hadn't, I didn't, there wasn't a point to prime, I didn't think, but there was one scratch that had properly gouged the metal, uh, gouged the paint all the way through the metal and it meant that the coloured paint that I bought didn't actually want to adhere to it properly which is like the biggest, biggest sign of how much of a difference primer makes. Um, so it literally, what, three to four coats of color and then three coats of clear coat and there's still a line that just it didn't want to adhere to. And it looks like I've scratched it after painting it, which is wild. So 
I also just went through to any gouges out of the roof because obviously people have just chucked random stuff in the back here. So there ends up being chunks and scratches and scuffs. Uh, so I've just sort of gone over all that and tried to sort of even that out with primer so that I don't have stuff all over me. Um, so then yeah, now when I go over it'll adhere really nicely and then the rest of it will be just normal paint that it'll stick to very well. So yeah, hopefully you can that out. How are you thinking? Not very good. But it will hold. I got a couple of decent logs in there, but also a couple of not so decent ones. I'm not sure if the settings were that perfect, but I'll end up grinding some of that up. But it turned out alright. The main thing is that it holds it, and you'll see how this is all gonna work when I actually put it in. that done the sun's not on here anymore it's really nice and cool which is a bonus it's gonna be hot in there but as the environment and the metal won't be piping hot so I'll be able to get stuck into it I did learn though how messy it is doing the ceiling which is a bit of an oversight on my behalf so I've managed to find a paint suit to cover myself and then yeah it's gonna be a busy afternoon Coat after coat after coat of this. Nice. Good weight. Put the hood on. Is it too small? <laughs> you look like a Teletubby. Oh gosh. There we go. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> wow. How did you go? Oh. <laughs> oh. How was that? It's hard. Doing it inside with no ventilation, like as in ventilation i had my mask on but even then it's just so toxic like whew, i just kept holding my breath and running in and running out again <laughs> again because i don't know how good that mask really is but it's done oh. yeah, like. yeah making leo's lounge better every day huh yeah but I'm pretty happy with that. It went exactly the same as the other stuff, like the side we did. It was super smooth. I think just being really methodical. I don't know. I don't know if it's the paint or if I've just taken like a lot more time and care this time around. I feel like in the past, me and paint never mix, but this time around, it's been pretty nice. Could have used maybe a tiny bit more clear coat, but the main thing was putting it on the side that the cabinet tree isn't going to cover. So obviously, the overhead cabinets are going to cover one corner so I just gave one really good coat behind there but then the other spots I gave like two to three just to really make it a nice finish hopefully I don't know we've blocked everything up in there I can't even really see so no runs we just have to wait and see in the morning how it's set wow clean wow not bad yeah not bad it's definitely like fresh yeah it just looks really clean 
Um, annoyingly, up there, there are like little pressure dings and things, so it hits the light a bit funny. But as a whole, I'm pretty damn stoked with that. I would have pref I would have liked to have slightly more clear coat, just to put like one more really nice layer on. But as a whole, I mean, there's a really nice amount of gloss sort of there, but I think one more coat would have done us really, really well, but it is what it is. Still looks so clean and fresh. And then obviously the cabinets will be covering up a large portion there. Obviously the front hasn't been done. That's a later date. We've got to board that up. But yeah. Good, good, another win. Okay, look at that. Russian doll, kitchenette. Then again, these will be two drawers and a cupboard. Obviously flush against the wall there. I just can't because this is in the way. Then corridor, drawer, pull out in the end. Fridge is back there. The mega piece, snug as a bug in a rug. It's all coming together. That's looking really nice. So now with this, it means I can just adjust some certain things. I haven't touched this piece since the very beginning, so I still need to drop off the top um, relative to the floor. A um, few little bits and pieces I need to make. This one is a bit long, but I just wanted to make sure it was all good. So. It's, I need to drop the height down the back there because it's hitting there. And then I've got a bit of an angle to chamfer off. But as a whole, yeah, I'm stoked. This is looking really nice. Uh, we've hit our first proper conundrum, which has really tested me. And I don't really know what to do. I hadn't thought of this and this is, I guess this is the hard thing about planning without physically having either the car or in this case the fridge and everything all at once and building around that at the time. And I've been going off my plans with everything going smoothly, but I hadn't encountered for this, which I've only just realized, thankfully before finalizing everything but this is a pickle, I'll, I'll show you. So the fridge goes here and then it's obviously super snug there. It's gonna have a front cover on it that locks into that piece at the end there, like overlaps it. Now the issue here is obviously it's nice and snug at the back, but because these lids are so damn fat, yes, they have round, edges but it means they don't so it's not like the cleanest hinge so then they end up protruding far back now that's fine with it by itself but when you also then want a countertop above it 15 mil on a hinge that impedes either the mechanism itself impedes the lid opening or the lid protruding impedes the lid opening so it'll end up like I might only get to here and I'll be bumping into some wood. So then I was thinking like maybe using sort of like, I was looking in different like types of hinges, but I've got really limited fixing points for hinges. Cause originally if this window didn't protrude just so much, it'd be fine. It's just that because it protrudes so much and we also do want it to open. And there's also this knob thing here. It means we've got far more stuff in the way. Whereas in my mind, I was thinking more like this. We've got way more depth. There's way more room to be able to put like some 15 mil ply here and then attach just your standard hinge to it that would lift up and out. And then there'd still be enough room. But because of this, we're so limited. I can't put anything back here to then put a hinge in.
then I'm thinking maybe like side mount kind of like scissor ones but they're usually massive for like sofa beds and futons and I'd mount one there and I'd mount one on this side that sort of go like up and out but I think if if they go too far sure they go up but then if they go a bit far out you're then cutting down on the space here that then the lid needs to open up into honestly right now this seems ridiculous but I, I'm very close <laughs> to actually just sticking the countertop to the fridge lids. Two independent countertops stuck to the top of them. I'll need to chamfer the back and have enough clearance along the back. But right now, that's honestly the only option I can see. If someone suggests in the comments something really smart, and I've already gone and done this, I'm gonna be pretty annoyed. I've already invested way too much time on this this afternoon just trying to think. This wasn't, I was really getting in a group with getting all this cabinetry, but this has been such a big hiccup. And I can't finalize anything until I know exactly what I'm gonna do, because I might need some, might not, I might need extra timber on some of those pieces and I don't wanna cut them off and then realize I need more to allow me to lift it higher, but I've already sort of cut everything and I don't want to raise the, um, raise the countertop, well I can't raise the countertop higher from all the pieces I have, but it just will keep eating up the window space, which I hate. Uh, and even then it would still, I don't have a place to fix a hinge and I don't have clearance anyway, it would move it higher, but I'd still be bumping into it. So it would get a little bit of room, but not a whole lot. So I mean, the cool thing about these fridges is you can literally pop the lids off and pop them back on. So, you know, worst case scenario, the fridge dies and we can just pop those lids off and pop them on a new fridge and it would be fine. Like the, the lids do nothing, they're just air. So we can go fridge to fridge with the same countertop if that's what it means. It would be a pretty clean look. Right now, this is not what I had anticipated. I think I'm gonna need to sleep on it. But man, we're running out of time. Um, I don't know. It's like I'm asking you for advice, but it's nothing you can do. It's already done. <laughs> By now, when you're watching it, I've oh, already done something silly. So, I think that's it. I'll have to have a pretty decent amount of clearance off the wall just so that when I do lift this up, it's not gonna just butt straight away. So I guess I'm just gonna experiment a little bit with some 15 mil ply, put it at different depths on the lid and see when it hits and how far open it can go and hopefully this is the solution. Oh, I'm so tired. But the part where like, I think the heat's making it worse as well, but the part of the bird that like the days start to get real long and like it's exciting, but then when you hit a hiccup, it really sort of hits you. So, experimental time. Right, so with like a chamfered edge, obviously I just blitz it on the sander, it's nothing pretty. Um, with a chamfered edge, I can actually get clearance for a full lid open to be here. So it's not actually that bad if we have, if I have that depth the whole way along, obviously split down the middle. But that's not a massive gap at the end, uh, at the back of the counter. I was worried it might look a bit funny, but realistically, if it means we can have a really nice countertop and then it's just a little bit more offset because we also need to make sure that we still can use this window. So we're gonna need to make sure we can get access to that knob to pull out and slide. I think it's the only real option. Mm -hmm.